In this video, we'll demonstrate how to install watch hands for GMT watches. You should be able to use the same technique for modding Seiko's and many other watches. For other content, such as the removal of watch hands, we have links below in the description. The second hand installation is very challenging for most beginners, and you run the risk of damaging the movement if you do it incorrectly. Therefore, we made a separate video for it. The link is in the description. For hand installation, you'll need a hand installation tool and a pair of tweezers or rodico to pick up the watch hands. A loop and a set of hand removal tools are also recommended as you'll likely need them as well. For the hand installation tool, this type is more than enough for most cases. For hour and minute hand installation, choose the tip that has the center hole slightly larger than the post of a minute wheel. If the hole is too big, you'll have worse control and risk bending the watch hand, while if the hole is too small, you won't be able to set the hour hand. The GMT hand requires a specific tip. We have a dedicated tool for this. Before we start, I recommend taking a good look at the movement using a loop if you have one. Be aware of how small and delicate the smallest post is, and be careful not to bend it during the hand installation process. This is where you'll install your sweeping second hand after the hour and minute hands are set. Let's prop up the movement and dial assembly. There are multiple ways to do this, but make sure the bottom side of the movement, the stem and the crown are not taking any pressure during the installation process. In this example, there is only pressure on the movement holder, not on the movement itself, and not on the crown or stem. For most watches, you can use the case back of a watch itself to support the setup like this. In this case, the pad is optional. Just choose a flat surface that won't scratch your case back. You may choose to use one of these movement holders, but be careful when you tighten it not to damage any of the moving components. Okay, let's get started. There are multiple ways to pick up a watch hand. You can pick it up using a pair of tweezers or a rodical. The top side of the watch hand has a more refined finish. The bottom side is less finished and has a protruding tube. Pull the crown all the way out to the time setting position and adjust the time forward until the date time transitions. Once the date ring completes its jump, we install the GMT hand, pointing it sharply at 12 o'clock. For all hand installations, we loosely attach them first so we can check the alignment before setting the hands. Try to keep the tool vertical and align it to the hour wheel. Be careful not to bend the post for the second hand. After setting the GMT hand, pull the crown all the way out to the time setting position and advance the time a full circle. The date should transition when a GMT hand is near 12 o'clock. A slightly off alignment at 12 o'clock is acceptable as the hand tends to jump a little bit when the date transitions and also because the date transition mechanism takes a relatively long time to complete its action. This is normal for an entry movement like the NH34. So we are simply aiming at date transitioning when the GMT hand is in the vicinity of midnight. If your watch hand alignment is off, the best practice is to remove and reinstall it. We have a link for our watch hand removal guide in the description. Keep in mind that the watch hands can become loose if you remove and reinstall them too many times. With a correct alignment, let's try to set the hand to its desired height. Set the GMT hand close to the dial while maintaining levelness. We want it close to the dial to leave more space for the hands above. Use a loop to take a look at the top of the hand and the post. For most standard setups, you should try to press the hand down until the top of the hand is flush with the post. Only use the correct hand installation tool. You should be able to push down all the way as the post will stop the tool at the correct height. Check the assembly with a loop after each attempt. It is important to get these surfaces to be as nearly flush as possible. 
Generally, we try to set all hands as low as possible without touching any components below, as that will leave us with more space for components above. Setting your GMT hand too high will force you to set the hour, minute, and second hands higher, which may result in your second hand getting caught by the crystal. We are also trying to set the hands as level as possible. Adjust the level of the hand gently. A way to do this is use the hand installation tool. I'm going to exaggerate the motion here to show you how the angle can be adjusted. In practice, you should avoid angling the tool too much and try to keep the hands as level as possible. A safer method is to use a thin plastic film or even just a post-it to gently pull up the tip of the hand afterwards. You can use the same technique to adjust the hour, minute and second hand. Now we can install the hour hand. We'll switch to the other hand installation tool and use the tip with the larger opening. We'll advance the GMT hand forward to six o'clock through the time setting position. With the GMT hand pointing at six, install the hour hand pointing at 12. Loosely attach it first, then check its alignment by advancing the time clockwise by six hours. You should see the hour hand pointing at six o'clock while the GMT hand points at nine o'clock. Advance the time by another 12 hours. Now the hour hand should be again at six o'clock while the GMT hand is at three o'clock. If the alignment is off, as your hour hand is loosely attached, you can remove and reset your hour hand as shown. Do another check and advance the time until the date transitions. The hour hand should be pointing at 12 o'clock. If the hour hand passes both tests, you can set the hour hand to the appropriate level, with the top being more or less flush with the post. At this point, you can try to quick set the GMT function. Push the crown all the way in and pull it out by one click. This is the date change or GMT quick change position. Turn the crown clockwise to move the GMT hand. After 24 jumps, it should return to the same position. The GMT hand is a 24 hour hand and one jump is one hour. When it advances by 24 hours, it will move the entirety of the cycle once, landing on where it started with. A note on the alignment. Since the NH34 is an entry level GMT movement, there's a small discrepancy between the quick set position and the regular position. For this reason, do not use the quick set position to determine the alignment. Always use the regular time changing position to do so. Now, onto the minute hand. Set the hour hand to 12 o'clock and then install the minute hand pointing at the 60 minute mark. Loosely attach it to check the alignment at 3, 6, 9 and 12 o'clock. Then we can apply pressure to set the minute hand. Unlike the hour hand that we just did, in some cases you won't be able to set the minute hand flush with the post, but it should be pretty close. If you are seeing this where the minute hand is sitting right on the hour hand and the hour hand has quite a gap between it and the dial, your hour hand is not set low enough. You'll have to remove your minute hand and adjust your hour hand's height. We always check the height and the level of the installation after setting each watch hand. This is how it should look after you set the hour and minute hands to the correct level and height. Okay, now that we have both the hour and the minute hand installed, we can check for alignments and clearance. If the hands are level and low enough, the date ring transitions at midnight and for each hour, the minute hand is pointing at the 60 minute mark. Then our hour and minute hand installation is complete. For the second hand installation, let's proceed to part two of our watch hand installation tutorial.